Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is actually a quick revision of the anatomy topics. Uh, so, for a continuation, please do the previous sessions on general embryology. We have done uh, topics in gametogenesis, reproductive cycle. Now, it's the third session in quick recap, that is fertilization. For a detailed session, please do watch my channel. This is just a quick recap. So we know that there are mainly two types of fertilization. One is in vivo fertilization and the other one is in vitro fertilization. So what do you mean by in vivo fertilization? In vivo fertilization means the fertilization which is occurring in a human body. And we know that the most common site of fertilization in a female is ampulla of the uterine tube. So the process of fertilization actually happens in three stages. There should be transport of gametes into the uterine tube. The oocyte should reach the uterine tube as well as the sperm should reach the uterine tube. Then there should be fusion of gametes and we have the results of fertilization. So for a sperm to enter into an oocyte, there are mainly four uh, hurdles. The first one is corona radiata. Corona radiata means at the time of ovulation, the oocyte will get released from the graphene follicle along with some of the granulosa cells surrounding it. They will be arranged in the form of corona radiata. Then zona pellucida just beneath it. Then you have the perivitelline space, the space between the zona pellucida and the white line membrane. And finally, you have the white line membrane. So these are the main four hurdles which the sperm has to cross in order to reach the oocyte. So before fertilization, again, the spermatozoa should undergo two important changes in the female genital tract. The first one you call it as capacitation and the second one you call it as acrosome reaction. It is said that for a sperm, once it reaches the uterine cavity, it takes roughly seven hours to reach the uterine tube and undergo capacitation. So what do you mean by capacitation? You know that there is a glycoprotein coat over the plasma membrane of the acrosomal region of the spermatozoa that should be removed in order for the acrosome reaction to happen because then only the granules of the acrosome cap can be released and it can lyse the hurdles of the sperm so the removal of the glycoprotein coat you, you can just imagine like removing your coat so that process is known as capacitation then the next one is acrosome reaction acrosome reaction means the acrosome cap which is there at the head of the sperm it contains enzymes like hyaluronidase and acid phosphatase, which are the chemicals which helps to lyse the hurdle. So these are released by a reaction known as acrosome reaction. So we know that there is corona radiata, zona pellucida and the white line membrane. So which are the chemicals acting at the, these levels? Corona radiata level you have the hyaluronidase. At the zona pellucida level, you have the acrosin and at the vitaline membrane, you have the integrin peptides. So this is the corona radiata, this is the zona pellucida and this is the vitaline membrane. Now, as a result of fertilization, what happens? We know that the female gamete, actually uh, at the time of ovulation, it will be arrested at the metaphase of the second meiotic division. So this uh, second meiotic division will be completed only if the oocyte gets fertilized. As a result, what happens at the end of second meiotic division, there will be a polar body, one more polar body released. That is the second polar body which is released into the perivitelline space. Now, the female, uh, the oocyte, the secondary oocyte will be converted into a female pronucleus. Whereas the head of the male, which is actually the nuclear portion of the uh, sperm, which is entering into the oocyte, that will be called male pronucleus. And as a result, they fuse together to form a zygote, which is diploid in number because we know that the female pronucleus is haploid as well as the male pronucleus is haploid. So ultimately, we get a diploid uh, zygote. So here the chromosomes are equally shared from both the parents and the cytoplasm is exclusively from the mother. Uh, some of you have had asked me why oogenesis begin before birth and why not spermatogenesis. It is said that oogenesis even though it begins before birth it is arrested at the prophase of first meiotic division until puberty. Why you need this much time? It is said that the oocytes need to get ready uh, for the fertilization process and it should have enough materials for the uh, growing embryo. So this period from the arrested prophase till puberty, this is considered as getting ready period for the 
oocyte because the cytoplasm for the developing embryo exclusively comes from the mother and the sperm is just giving a minute uh, just giving the genetic material apart from that the entire cell the bulk the cytoplasm comes from the mother so but, but what about the chromosomal sex of the offspring it is decided by the father because sperm has got two options it can be either 22 plus 6 or 22 plus y but uh, ovum has only one option that is 22 plus x so the y component should come from the sperm that is the father that is the reason why we say chromosomal sex of the offspring is decided by the father and as a result the cleavage division begins so you can see that this is corona radiator zona pellucida and the oocyte once the sperm enters it uh, the sperm is converted into a male pronucleus and the oocyte is converted into a female pronucleus and we get a zygote and in this line space you can see two polar bodies one favorite question was how many polar bodies you can get to the maximum in the line space it is said that sometimes the first polar body which was released after the first meiotic division will also sometimes undergo the second meiotic division along with the secondary oocyte so you can get you can get up to three polar bodies in the perivit line space then of course the cleavage uh, division begins so uh, what do you mean by fertilization in vitro all these steps happen outside the body in a lab setting which is favorable for fertilization that is what is meant by fertilization in vitro so what are the steps we need egg so the egg maturation is by hormonal stimulation then we have to remove that egg into a lab setting that is done by laparoscopy so laparoscopic removal of the eggs then we will collect the sperms by um, the seminal fluid from the seminal fluid after ejaculation then it is the fertilization of both eggs and sperms and ultimately the embryo will start cleaving uh, and the cultured embryos uh, we can say up to three embryos are usually implanted into the uterine cavity because sometimes uh, uh, one or two might get rejected uh, so uh, having this in mind we are actually implanting up to three embryos and that is also the reason why sometimes uh, we can see that uh, after infertility treatment um, sometimes the mother will give birth to two uh, twins or triplets because all the three embryos which we implant might get hatched very beautifully now the rest of the embryos are actually kept frozen for future years because if the three embryos won't uh, won't be actually giving birth to a uh, child in that case we will have to again repeat the process uh, and for this purpose we are actually preserving the embryos uh, for future use so then uh, one technique we use is intrafallopian transfer or a gamete intrafallopian transfer that is otherwise known as gift in this condition what we do is we keep the gamete directly into the uterine tube fallopian tube uh, sometimes the sperm will be having some uh, motility issues on or the cervical uh, mucus must be hostile or sometimes the oocyte uh, won't be able to reach the uterine tube so in these conditions we take the oocyte and we take the sperm and we keep it directly in the uterine tube that is known as gamete intrafallopian transfer so hostile cervical mucus conditions the gametes are introduced into the uterine tube directly and fertilization and embryogenesis occur naturally what do you mean by single embryo transfer we say, mentioned that the up to three embryos we usually keep sometimes if you are waiting a bit longer for the culture to develop then there is less chance of getting rejected so in that condition we can uh, go for a single embryo transfer then intracytoplasmic sperm injection sometimes a sperm the motility will be hindered in that condition we are actually taking a sperm and directly keeping it into the cytoplasm of the oocyte that is known as intracytoplasmic sperm injection so what is the most common site of fertilization infundibulum isthmus upper segment ampulla we know that it is ampulla now hurdles of sperm entry are all except we mentioned about corona radiata zona pellucida white line membrane so it is not stratum compactum because it is just a layer of the endometrium so it is not considered as a hurdle for sperm entry the removal of the glycoprotein coat overlying the acrosomal region of the spermatozoa is called 
Corona reaction, zona reaction, capacitation, necrosome reaction. Removal of coat is always capacitation. Code for capacitation. Now, the chemicals integrating, disintegrating the barriers. We know that the three barriers are corona radiator, zona pellucid and vitaline membrane and we have the hyaluronidase, acrosin, integrin peptides. So, corona radiator is by hyaluronidase, zona pellucid is disintegrated with the help of acrosin and vitaline membrane by integrin peptides. Following are the results of fertilization except first polar body in the perivitaline space, completion of second meiotic division, restoration of the diploid number, beginning of cleavage. We know that the first polar body in the perivitaline space usually happens just before ovulation. So even if fertilization doesn't happen, there will be a first polar body in the perivitaline space. Now, which of the following is an example of in vitro fertilization? We know that GIFT, ICSI, uh, single embryo transfer, all are methods of in vitro fertilization. So the new life which we have, the life when it starts, after fertilization, it's actually not a belief, it is a scientific fact. Hope you enjoyed this session. Please leave your comments if you find it useful and please keep watching for further sessions. Thank you.